Welcome everybody to our Saturday webinar. Um, today we have a full house here and I will um, allow Jim to introduce everyone that is sitting with him. I know he has a special guest in the house that went from California all the way to Jim's house. David, wave hello. Um, <clears throat> And we also have over here Brian, Christine, Jay, John Lee, Michelle, Sheer, Wendy, Will, and of course myself, Sabrina, and those that are watching, nine viewers we have so far. So thank you to everyone who's watching us today. Um, uh, Jim, would you like to say something first? Just hello to everybody. Uh, welcome. It's a beautiful day today. Uh, we have some. I, I'd like to introduce everybody that's in the room here today. We have Erica, and Lydia is new to the crowd here. If you want to come over and say hello. <laughs> How old are you? Ten. Lydia's ten. Uh, welcome. Our, <laughs> there, <you go. laughs> there she is. <laughs> hello, Lydia. Welcome. And uh, Brian, my next door neighbor, as you all know, and uh, from many of the uh, videos. Awesomeness to you. Make yes. sure you have some water to stay hydrated during this awesomeness. Yes. <laughs> Mark's back there. Mark Zinzo and uh, Angie. And then we have Raymond over here. And um, this guy here is David Waller from California. So, And some people were learning about him with his interview with Brian. and about the different things that he has been up to recently. So back to you for a moment. Um, thank you. Do you have any announcements to make? Are, do, are you working? I think you are doing a few things with Max now. The, we have tomorrow the Reiki 1 class from uh, noon to 4 East EST, Eastern Standard Time. So uh, I'm not sure how many people are signed up for that, but we, we do have Reiki 1 tomorrow. So there's other things coming up, but I have to, I'm going to uh, wait on that. Okay. Also, we right. have um, it just a lot of things are coming in the future here and a lot of excitement, fourth dimensional energy, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so... Um, I have other announcements, but I think I'm going to wait on them. Okay. Um, if if anyone would like to sign up for the Reiki class, please contact. Um, I would say Max. Um, he yes. does more of the administration part. So, um, if you would like to learn Reiki and would like to be involved in the class, and it's starting tomorrow, um, please contact Max about that. I think there are a, at least a three or four signed up already. Not quite sure, but um, yes, there's still room in the class, I believe. Okay. Very good. Um, um, I would like to say a few words now, Jim. Um, sure. I don't. I'm not sure if everybody is aware that in the United States right now um, there were um, several black people killed. Um, I've heard of four you know so far in the news I've only heard of two um, and there were also policemen killed um, because somebody uh, retaliated so I think it's important that we all pay attention to what's happening and not to go into fear but to go into learning, to go into introspection and to go into looking at yourself and these are points in life that teach us that want to let us know that there is much that we still need to learn and that there is much 
that needs to come out of us. So when these things happen, I think it's important that we look in and say, what within me is in fear? What within me is in anger? What within me, you know, makes me afraid of a particular culture or group of people? What is it that I need to work out within me that tells me this makes me afraid? Because most of the time it's fear and also power. Um, that people are 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 using to hurt others. Mm -hmm. So when we do that, the lives that are lost um, teach us something and it's 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 not a loss. It is a loss for the people whose family members were lost. And I would also like to you know, say a blessing for them, for they are going to need it. All of them, both sides are in pain, both sides are hurting, because both sides were lost in unfair way. So, when we just look over these events and just let it go and say, just another one of those, then the gift that they gave us is lost. So let's use this as a teaching moment for us, for humanity. Because someone once had a dream. Let's make that a reality for us. Let's make it something that we accomplish, something that we give to this planet, something that we give to the children of this planet where we say, this matters to us. The way we treat each other matters to us. The way I treat you matters. The way I look at you matter. Let's learn to respect each other, to care about each other, to be there for each other, and to recognize the pain in others, to see their pain, and to say, I am here for you. Even if it's, you know, a smile, just a smile sometimes makes a day for someone who has not seen one in a long time. A hello to a neighbor that nobody visits, that nobody goes to see. A sick person who's in the hospital and has no family members. All of these things make a difference in humanity. So let's not only speak about it, let's do. And let's make a change that at the end, it will be seen by our great-grandchildren or our children or whichever generation sees it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that we don't see it. That does not matter. What matters is that where you stood, you made a difference. So on that note, I will read a blessing that was given to me. Um, it says, Today I will not ignore the pain of the hopeless. Today I will not ignore the pain of the sick. Today I will not ignore the pain of the hurt. Today I will not ignore the pain of the angry. Today, I will not ignore the pain of the unwanted. Today, I will choose to understand their pain and my pain. Today, I will honor them with my presence, with my love and my understanding. Today, 
I will ask the universe to open up their minds and their hearts so they are able to see their own pain. Today, I will ask God to hold them in his heart and help them find their path to their inner light. Today, I will honor myself by looking inside and seeing within me um, what needs healing. Today, God, God will be the one that guides my steps into the light. Thank you, Very everyone. Nice. And uh, blessings for everyone. And uh, there's some food for thought there. Yes. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank you all. And um, I would like to ask now if there's any particular entities, anyone I would like Jim to bring. I would like to speak to Takur. Um, <laughs> but uh, of course, um, everyone, please unmute and tell Jim who you would like for Jim to channel. I have a request in the room for Tesla. Nice. Any? You broke up. Any ascended master? Oh, an ascended master, okay. Or. Um, I think your name was Lori Ayel, Archangel. Oh, uh, Lori Ayel? Yeah. Yes, there was a Archangel Lori Ayel. Uh, I would like to ask for King Solomon. King Solomon? Ooh, that's an interesting one. Yes, he's the most... <laughs> Anyone else? I'd like to ask for Queen Sheba. I'm a history buff, so actually, I want to hear the other side. All right. Ooh, I, I would love to talk um, to Nefertiti. <laughs> Nefertiti from the Egyptian culture. Okay. Yes, but but really, um, um, anyone that can tell me about about uh, uh, the the crash that occurred and the ship that was seen, and all those good things. That's why I asked for Takar, so. Oh, okay. Very good. I don't know who's coming, um, but that's several requests, so <laughs> not all of them will make it, I'm sure, but we'll see who's available and who has the best messages. Well, I'll just ask for that. And who has the best information. <clears throat> so uh, I just pray that everybody has a wonderful session today. And I'm going to do a slight meditation here, and we'll bring whoever comes first. All right. Have a good session. Much love. Much love. Greetings, I am Takur. Greetings, Takur. How is everyone doing today? Very good. How about you? I am doing very well. I am here because I've heard my name being requested, and I do have some information. But please ask questions first, and then I will do what I have to say. Okay. All right. Um, I will start. Um... First, I would like to know um, what's going on with the holographic. 
The holographic is not being used at this time. There's too many defects in it for it to be viable because actually when people do come to the colonies via the holographic, they still do not remember as much. So therefore, we are waiting for the site to site to be approved. This will be the best method. We know that you will remember from that. But of course, um, first contact hasn't come and the governments are very much against people leaving the planet or us coming down. So we're still discussing that. The talks between August 1st and 3rd are going to be very important about this. Okay, so, so you have n no resolution yet as to, as to when or how? We know how. There is site to site available already and there are some species that are illegally doing site to site or doing site to site with permission and in certain spots for particular reasons. However, for our mission, the site to site with average American people has not been approved. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, and there, in that, go ahead. Site to site has been approved for special cases, including. Uh, some with the military and some with special groups and interest groups to the government. But when it comes to the masses, they are not willing to have the masses leave the earth or be have aliens appear in front of the regular average individual. Okay, so... Um, why was that approved? and not, let's say, for the people who are sick? We are trying to do that first. We found that they do have some interest in bringing the, those who are not well to the ship to have them healed. However, they only want to do government officials or those that are family of government officials. This is not acceptable. If we are going to start healing people, we would like to heal everyone, not just government officials. It is not fair that they who have power and prosperity be the ones that only get the healing. So we have been telling them that that is not acceptable. Okay. Um, the it other... must be approved for all people. Yes, because that, that, that would be my comment, that it really should be approved for all people because I, I can see that staying that way uh, because they're getting they will be getting what they want um, and and a bargaining chip would be lost there yes but right now if you are noticing more leaders are becoming more sensitive about alien contact they realize something must be done shortly there are too many species around the planet for them to ignore. There are too many ships, too many sightings, and too much information coming in that for them to ignore the fact that aliens must be recognized and the people must be told. If it comes to the fact that contact comes before the governments are going to tell the people, they will look foolish and therefore they must start to soften the information so that the people will start to know that we exist and that we are here in a friendly capacity and not here to take over or invade. There will be those that will come to the planet to try to do these things, but your planet is so populated with different species at this time that would be an impossibility. Others would step in and stop them. So at this point, only the very best of the alien species would be those that would contact you, we believe. Now, if there's covert action from negative beings, we are not aware that they are even planning anything because they feel 
outnumbered. <clears throat> okay. Um, on that note, to Kerr, I would also want I want to ask if if you could say uh, where the colonies the colonies that you have the six colonies I believe um, six yeah um, where are they located each one of them they're located on the ships around the planet however Era has a shadow version of each of these colonies the only difference is that the Aaron version of each of these colonies are only for specific people that they are training privately. They have not opened it to all the public. This has changed within the last three months. They, they were open for all the public, but now the shadow colonies on around Era are only open for specific individuals that will be working specifically with Aaron. So that has changed. But the, the six colonies, colony one is telepathy and languages, colony two health and education of health, diet, things of this nature. Three is the video colonies where they're making the films and the movies. Four is the, the channeling colonies where you learn and are able to uh, open your channeling areas. Five is the entertainment area where that you go to relax, to chat, or to be entertained. And six is the healing colony with he healing energies and healing modalities such as Joe Ray, Reiki, Holy Fire, Acupressure, okay. Acupuncture, many of the others. Okay. Um, so Galactic so Reiki is also being experimented with there. So Gurfanir doesn't have any colonies on any planet on the solar system? No, not at this time. Okay. They've decided to make them on the ships. Okay. Um, there's more than one colony one and there's more than one colony. Uh, uh, each colony is duplicated on the ships because there are so many people going to the ships. You need more colony ones and more colony twos, etc. So all the ships, there are 15 ships around your planet that are of Grikvik near. So there are more than one Colony 1 and more than one Colony 2, etc. Okay. Um, my, my next question was about um, a... I know, I know that a ship crashed in, uh, in Arizona. Um, yes. And I was wondering uh, what you could tell us about that and, and since we haven't heard anything about it. When, when the ship crashed, it was brought down suddenly. So there was not much information given before the actual crash. But we know that there were uh, greys involved in uh, the crash. I do not know if they were meaning to cause the crash or if it was accidental. This information has not been brought forward. The, there has been some casualties with this crash, but we do not know a great deal about it because your governments swarmed in and took over pretty much. Um, we did the communication system on the ships were badly damaged because it happened to crash in a way that they, the that part of the ship was a very badly damaged. Do you understand? So yes. we've gotten some information, but most of the information that we have gotten is from sources within the government of your government that we have perhaps some people that are connected with us there. And so the information is that there were at least a few fatalities and that this is very top secret and that it is being dealt with in a way that is probably not uh, as good as we would want it to be. However, we know this. There are still some that are alive, and there are those that 
are trying to communicate with your governments about what has happened and trying to find a way back into uh, friendly space. Okay, because I, um, I saw I saw one of the ones that that died, and um, and I know that they capture some. Yes. And I believe the 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 crew was between three or five. I I am not sure about yes, that. Yes, it was a small crew. It was a small ship. Yes. Yes. Um. Now, are are you negotiating? Are you going to try and negotiate with them to release the ETs that were captured? We have been in contact with some officials in that area, but they are not saying that they are not actually admitting that there are any survivors. Okay. But we know that they are because yes. information from inside some of these facilities tells us that there are at least two to three survivors. Yes, I think there's three. So therefore we know that they are not telling us the truth about that. They said that all passengers had passed. However, we know that that is not true. Yeah, because um, I, was, I was forewarned about it. Well, we also let them know that we know that there are, we found vital statistics and life signs of some of the survivors. And so, therefore, we let them know, and they, they did not respond to that. Okay. All right. So, we are working with them. We are sending friendly messages, of course. Nothing threatening, nothing of a warning of any kind. They, we are being as friendly as possible. We do want our survivors back. They are not actually from the Gurkfrick Near project or alliance, whatever you want to call it, but they are from uh, friends. They are friends. Yes, and they're good ETs, and I think... Yes, they are, um, not, they are not of negative... No, they are not, so I think, I think it is important um, that we do whatever possible to help them. We, we sense that they are frightened and that they are confined. Okay. This is the information that we have so far. All right. Yeah, because um, cause I, 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 I saw it. Um, and I, I don't know if you can speak of near where it is. It is not necessary to speak of where, but um, because we do not want people rushing there or going there. This would only cause more problems. Okay. Um, I also wanted to ask you about a ship that was, well, a cloud, quote-unquote, um, that was she seen over at Cartagena, Colombia? Yes. Uh, it was huge. Yes. I am surprised they got that close to the Earth's surface. But it was a mother ship, yes, but not ours. It was yes. a circular ship, so therefore you know it was not ours. Right. And, and whose ship was that? Can you tell us? I am not allowed to divulge that information because it would put them in danger. Oh, okay. Then don't say it. <laughs> I don't want anyone in danger. Um, but I, I think it's exciting, and um, and actually, um, Liney was wondering if that was like the Mandela effect somehow. It was caused by the Mandela effect. We believe that fourth dimensional energy is increasing uh, exponentially. So therefore, we have moved farther out into the, into the galaxy, not to be close to it, because we are fourth dimensional, and the fourth dimensional fluctuation would definitely affect us, and we want to remain as calm and positive as possible. So therefore, we are farther, much farther away at this time. However, we are still monitoring and able to communicate with Earth in a very positive 
and natural way so far. Okay, and then there was also a slip by the EU president um, about speaking to uh, leaders of other planets. You know. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, we, we heard that and were quite surprised. The news traveled very quickly to us because he was talking about our times of talking to Earth. And one is coming up very shortly in August. And he was referring to the uh, communications that we had had just recently about that particular council. Oh, so was that was that a Mandela effect, or or he just slipped? It was a slip. Okay, very good. Uh, <laughs> I'm just too excited. I'm excited about this to occur because. It tells us that we're getting closer. It would appear so, yes. I believe the fourth dimensional energy that is coming will help bring things a lot closer to first contact because, first of all, people will be seeing th things that they have never seen before and be questioning what this is and why they are seeing it and what is happening because timelines will be pulled much closer together. There's also already been many, many changes in your historical lines, your fourth dimensional music and literature lines, etc. So as fourth dimensional subject matters are involved, things that were inspired by, by fourth dimension will be the first things that will change. Yes, because even our president is softening the language on, on uh, the existence of life outside this planet. It's been mentioned by more than one of your presidents. However, people are now starting to take note of it in a more real way. President Clinton mentioned it as well. Yes, but o Obama's language lately, he was even questioned by a little girl. Yes. And, uh, and his answer was quite telling, actually. Yeah. Not, not so much to the little girl, but to the audience and the general <clears throat> people around. Exactly. Exactly. So, anyways, I can't contain my excitement. <laughs> Thank you, Tukur. Would you like to speak to someone else now? Um, I think there is uh, a question by, by Slava. Um, Slava. Yes. And, and I did not get my email. That is true. Okay. And then uh, Wendy's going to ask them since she's been keeping track. Hi, Tucker. Hi, Tucker. It's Wendy. How are you today? Wonderful, Wendy. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, we just have a couple of questions. Um, from uh, The first one's from... Slava, and he was wondering if you, if uh, he'd like to ask about his Lyran daughter, Pan Keishi, and I wonder how old she is or when she was born, and if it is possible, could you please tell me about her? And then he did May, have a second part born, as well. She is, one of, she is one of the newer children. She was born in May. I'm not sure the exact date, but she is, has been born in May. She is beautiful. She is gifted. She is already starting to respond to uh, some intellectual stimulation, and I cannot really give a whole lot of information because Sengi has all that, but I do know about her, and that all of his children seem to be exceptional. Excellent. Oh, and speaking of Sengi, could you just um, maybe elaborate just a minute on how we, um, those of us like Slava who want to ask questions, do we... Can we just direct them telepathically to Sangi and then and get the answers for ourselves? Her. Yes, call Sangi and she will work with you. Okay, I, great. I have already spoken to her and we have already made some plans on how we can better help humanity understand what is happening to their uh, hybrid children. Excellent, and um, that was actually part of my other question, but I'll ask that after Slava's. Um, uh, he also wanted to know that, and at the beginning of this week, I believe I have 
have interesting visitation. It was at the night from Monday to Tuesday. It was two beings. I remember they spoke on their language, but I immediately heard translation in my language. Could you please tell about this visitation? Thank you very much. Yes, they were talking to you. You heard the interpretation in your language because they wanted to communicate their friendship to you. These two beings were from the Andromedan area. Andromeda is becoming much more involved in this, the ascension just recently. Now, in Andromeda you find less humanoid people than you would find in other galaxies. In the, in the Andromedan galaxy, the reason that more uh, reptilians and less humanoid people exist is because they're highly survive, they survived a highly radioactive uh, period when uh, the galaxies collided. And so therefore, the species that rose up afterwards were not humanoid, or less, less of them were humanoid. And so these are species that are wanting to communicate and find ambassadors to their planets. And they're looking for people that have uh, DNA that would be uh, helpful or compatible with their atmospheres and with their uh, species. And they have found that Slava has some DNA in him from one of these uh, species and they are trying to just be friendly and communicate before they uh, talk to him about an ambassadorship. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Takar. That was a great answer. Um, <clears throat> in general, I wanted to ask about, about how the children are doing and how many are there now? Um, there are... About how many... uh, there are over 300 hybrid children, well over 300, and in fact it's probably 350. I don't know exactly how many, but they're on Era, Maya, and a couple other planets. Some ships have taken some of the children's and families as well. Not the ships that are necessarily around the planet, but other ships in the galaxy um, that are helping and part of the Alliance have taken some of the families and children's, but mostly they're on three pr particular planets, Era, Maya, and another one that will not be named quite yet. Yes, I understand completely. Good. I, um, and I, I do feel as though a few of us have been spending time with them on Maya as well. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Maya is becoming a greater source of uh, help for, for the Group for Theory Alliance. Very good. Yes, thank you. Um, um, I think I'll, well, I had a comment here about our government, but I think that we kind of covered that already for now. Perhaps we may come back to that one. Um, uh, Krellick did have a question as well. Um, Dear Takur, while I was meditating earlier today, I kept on getting an image of a skull. I'm not sure if this is something I conjured up <clears throat> myself or if it means something. Was there a skull in my meditation? The, I am not sure exactly what context you saw the skull in, but many people are seeing skulls these days. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It could be related to the crystal skulls that are being uh, organized at this time to be brought together. It could be also about uh, the sh different, uh, what is it? There is some changes in DNA and the skull will be involved in that. And that is part of what is coming in the future. You see now children are being born with higher IQs on your planet with greater hybridization and actually some are actually hybrid aliens that are being born so therefore you are you're going to find some skull differences at this time so the skull has many different uh, 
thought processes in the sense that it could be an image of any of these things. Also, there are some dangerous times coming up and sometimes a skull can be a representation or symbol of something unpleasant. But we're hoping that this is not the case. We are trying to keep things as peaceful as possible. So therefore, we are thinking that your vision of a skull, because you are with friendly aliens most of the time, is a sign that the children have are evolving on your planet in a little different way than they were before. Yes, thank you for that, Takur. And there's actually been a few of us recently who seem to be connecting with the crystal skulls. Um, a few of us actually had an experience with that yesterday um, yeah. together in a hangout. So I was wondering if you were even aware of that or, or if you could tap into that. Um, I was not aware that you had a hangout about it or we were aware. That it was just part of it, yeah. Um, I, I'm just wondering if we experienced something similar where many of us are starting to tap into these, uh, the energy of these crystal skulls. The, the skulls are key to the opening of the stargates and to the first contact idea. Ah, perfect. I understand. Um, oh, and I did miss a question from Jess444. Um, hello to Kirk. Can you please help me with an infusion to best increase my healing capabilities and offset my high reptilian percentage, 30%? Um, what specific race of reptilian am I most connected with, and is this why I've had such a challenge life on Earth, challenging life on Earth? Much love to you. Yes. A high reptilian representation in the DNA can give a difficult life, especially starting at uh, adolescence. You become out of control, your mind becomes fuzzy, you, you're... Uh, thought processes and decision-making abilities are inhibited and it lasts for quite a while. It, depending on how much that, that particular hormone of reptilian comes through you is how much it does affect your life. Now, it will calm down as you become older. However, I do not know how much, many years you went through the reptilian adolescence. 30% is very high. There are only a few people on Earth that have that high of reptilian actually born into them. So and I only know one other person that I can think of that has that high of reptilian, and 5% of their DNA is also draconian. So, yes. Um, yes, that is very possible why your life has been very rough. What was the other part of the question? Um, just, I think that that was the <clears throat> just a bit here. Let me just uh, double check real quick. Um, and that was just wondering if that was why that it was has been such a challenge for them here on Earth. Yes, that is why. Yes. Okay. And oh, Sarah oh, wanted to. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Also, they'll find a very strong disconnect with third dimension if they have a lot uh, of reptilian in them or a lot of alien in your system because you're from a different lifestyle and a different culture in your last life. And so, therefore, you will find a great disconnect and a great misunderstanding with how third dimension should be handled. Ah, uh, okay. That, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you for that, Tucker. Um, yeah. Sarah, wants, our friend Sarah uh, Oxidine wanted to know, she had a dream this week that many of the Hukalo members were together in a beautiful paradise um, area having a great time. Um, where were we? And actually several of us, I think, have had the same dream experience in the last week or two. Um, could you elaborate on that? Yes. Fourth dimensional energy is becoming stronger and stronger every day. Um, it may not seem like there is a lot going on as far as unusual activities. However, uh, those with high fourth dimensional energy in their minds are moving into a positive frame uh, naturally so that they can handle the fluctuation of the energy in the fourth dimensional cloud that is coming. Therefore, these people are having illusions of paradise so that this will offset some of the, uh, the fluctuations of the fourth dimensional energy. 
Thank you. To Kurt. Thank you. Go ahead, Sir. Uh, Sabrina. Uh, thank you, Tucker. Uh, Michelle, do, would you like to ask? Oh, thank you, Sabrina. Hi, Tucker. How are you? I am very well. Thank I, you. I'm very glad. So it keeps popping into my awareness that I'm supposed to ask you something with regard to Evan, my son. There's something. Yes. I'm not sure why, but you probably do have something for me. <laughs> One moment, please. I know that he is very... He has a lot of alien DNA within him, yeah. but he is pushing through that now. He is being affected by fourth dimensional energy cloud as well. And this is wow. causing some erratic behavior. And um, it, it will calm down eventually, but right now it is hitting him in a way that is very different. Is he experiencing maybe something that shows him that what I talk about has some truth to it? <laughs> he is definitely coming into contact with this energy, yes. Excellent. Very cool. Thank you. Much love. Very well. Much love. Um, hi to Kurt. Gabriel had a question. Um, he wanted to know um, if you had a message for him and how come he's not able to feel you anymore. Gabriel has is going through a third dimensional shift. Also with the fourth dimension he is is also experiencing some changes. There, it will come back eventually, but right now there are some things that he needs to connect with in third dimension and become part of that are very necessary for his growth. So therefore he will not be able to hear many of the alien voices that he heard before. At this point he is still growing and moving forward. Do not be discouraged. This is a necessity for you. You will discover the reason why later when you come out of this particular third dimensional move. You are to be important, of course, in many ways, but you must go through this to experience some of the lessons before you become greater. Does that make sense to you? Oh, I'm sorry, he is not here. No, but he's... it should make sense to him that the third dimension is very strong with him right now. Yes, I can, I can see it also. And I think it's very good for him. I agree. This is a time of interesting grounding. What I'm talking about is that he's not ever been grounded like this before. And he is starting to become more involved in the third dimension and learn about it in a way that he needs for future reference. Correct. I totally agree with that statement. Yes. Um, let's see, who, who was next? Oh, Sheer was next. Hello, Taku. How are you? I am very well. Sheer, how are you? I am very well. And I want to ask you about something called Alpha Brain. It's um, well, it's something that um, composed out of uh, different kinds of herbs. And when people take it before going to sleep, they are reporting that they have lucid dreams. Is it possible for us to take, let's say, Alpha Brain before we go to the colonies and have a greater recollection of our visit there? Alpha Brain. I believe we call it another compound. However, yes, this particular compound will help you remember the colonies if you do take it. Be cautioned. It is not something you should use a lot. It does enhance some areas of the brain that have not been accessed. Therefore, you do not want to over-access the brain too quickly. The stimulation will cause delusionary thoughts as well. You might, when you use the right dosage, 
it will bring you into a realistic thought process, is lucid dreams and greater understanding of the fourth dimensional beings and places. However, if you overuse it or use it incorrectly, it could also cause disillusion. Yes, I know. The um, script, how to use it. It's uh, something that a company made. It's uh, drugs free and uh, psychedelic free. It's not something uh, yes, that makes it you. Is. But still, it is an. It is a stimulant to areas of the brain that are not yet open. Therefore, you must be careful with that. Opening certain parts of the brain too early can cause you to be unbalanced. Do you understand? Oh, these, yeah, kind of, these kind of experiences can throw off your uh, grounding and balance into third dimension because you would, you'll get an idea that that you'll be able to do things that are greater than what you will be able to do and therefore put yourself in danger at some point. I see, so just in the right amount each day for small doses. Yes. Oh, what I'm saying is that you will be under the illusion that you that you have powers that yeah, are so greater than what you Yes. Do you understand that? Yes. Um, also, there is something that um, is produced by a seaweed, I think it's called. Something that helps to purify the panelian gland that you can also take. Is it also something that could help me with uh, opening my third eye? I am not sure what substance you are speaking of at this point. I do know of the other one, but this one I am not sure that I am aware of. At least not completely. Okay, and is there any messages for me that you can give me? Uh, right now, I cannot give you the message that I, can, that I have for you because it's more of a personal nature. I will okay. tell you on Tuesday or Wednesday when I see you. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much and much love. Uh, and yeah. also, would it, would it be possible for me to go maybe side to side even in the meeting of September, the one that I'm going to be there? It will never be side to side on the meeting, but we will be talking about that subject, yes. Okay, you thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, and much, much love to you, Tikar. Much, much love. Ia kawati, sumo shriptia, kata, mauna oko. I'm um, sorry, I had to uh, communicate something to a member. You okay. Um, Continue. Does anyone in the room uh, with Tikar have any questions? Kika wata, and siya kawshu, nanuwa, and... Is there anyone here that has a question? I just wanted to speak for a couple of moments before I leave okay, about Jennifer. something that has come to my attention. Um, it would appear that what you spoke of very early in, in this day about actions of people and how we can overcome them or your people can overcome them. How we have overcome it is to realize that when people are given over to anger, you also give over your control. Do you understand that? You are no longer in control when you are angry. People stop listening to you when you are angry, in many cases, unless you are in front of a group of people and you are being emotional about a particular subject and they're really listening. But anger is usually a loss of control. This is something that your people need to learn. It is not a tool to cause them to be greater. It is not a tool to cause them to be more powerful. They may get what they want because they have to get, the people that they are yelling at have to give in 
because they are part of customer service or whatever it is. But to lose control with anger is to actually give up your own control. You have lost it. You have not, you have lost respect. You have lost control. You have lost the idea of what you are here for. Understand that anger is not the answer. That anger only temporarily will give you what you want, perhaps. You may feel better and powerful while you're being angry, but you're going to realize that it really did not accomplish anything except for to cause the problem to be greater. Is there any questions about this? Yes. So, so when uh, people feel angry, what do you think the a process, can, can you give us a process that can help uh, yes. with that in that moment? In that moment, whenever anger strikes, you have to stop and evaluate what is happening. Why is that that you're feeling angry? First of all, some people try to incite anger, and what does? The, and if you become angry, you're giving them the power. You give it right over. They have won. This is what they want to do. They wanted to make you angry, and they have succeeded, and you have given them your power. Do we understand that? So any time that you are feeling angry, you must stop and decide or discover what it is about that situation that's causing the anger. Because many times it is a reflection of yourself. They are pushing on you a reflection of yourself, and you are giving them yourself and not re actually responding to the actual stimulus. Does that make sense to you? Yes, and, and, and oftentimes um, the anger, it's due to not be feeling like you're not being heard or understood. Exactly. And therefore you have to approach it with love and understanding because that is the only way that you will finally get to the final result. Anger will not get to the final result. It will only cause separation and removal and more hurt and many times complete separation from those that you once cared for. Yes. Thank you, Tucker. Um, I just have one more question from Liney. Um, she's been uh, very um, paying attention a lot to that to that fourth dimensional energy, and she had asked if um, if the timelines that's bleeding into ours it's a fourth dimensional one. Also, on that timelines are they? In other words, is that timeline? Does that timeline have more fourth dimensional energy? And are they more no. alien aware? No. What is happening is they have just as much fourth dimensional energy as you have in many ways. But what is happening is that as the cloud passes through, it's pulling them together because it is drawing the fourth dimensional energy closer to itself. So it's like as you come closer, it's pulling them together so that it can feed and give fourth dimensional energy to all these timelines so they're all pulling together as this cloud comes through. Do you understand that? It's not that they have more energy, it is that it's the cloud is drawing on all the fourth dimensional energy that is within these timelines and pulling them closer so that it can because it, it does attract its own energy. Okay, because I think part of the reason why she's asking that is because she's wondering if perhaps in the other timeline, uh, first contact, it's closer, 
and if as they merge, you know, as as they come together, if certain events are going to bleed into this, that might make first contact happen faster. It it is possible. We can see into the timelines to a certain extent. At this point, we do not see any first contacts in those timelines because we cannot look that far into the future. We do see that there is a timeline about 12 timelines out on your left side, if you were to say it that way, that has already had a, a small first contact. Yeah. Um I would like to make also a footnote here. Uh, the day um, Ish had came, um, God was there with me, and uh, he eventually left, but an angel gave me the message. And um, they were saying that this energy is meant as a positive thing for humanity. Yes, um, it for, is. For us to be for us to take advantage of it. Those with high fourth dimensional energy will realize that if they stay calm during these periods when this energy is flowing through, there will be some fluctuation of force. But if they stay calm during this time, they will be able to perceive information from other timelines. And it might be a very informational and wonderful thing because this will be a time that will not be experienced again for 237 million years. <clears throat> wow. That's it? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yes. So I, I think, um, I mean, I had made a request to him uh, to perhaps give us a time period where we could propel ourselves, and this might be that yes. gift. So. So I, I do, I do want to say to everybody, please take advantage of it um, with your meditations and your introspection. Catch your water, yes. Kiakato untwa kahato waka. And kia kotia, tamitio kia mpata kotua. Oh, I'm sorry, I, not everyone understands, but um, that is all right. Yeah. Is there any other questions, or should I go? I I think we I are there good. Another to story. Her. I know there I is have other. A, I have oh, a couple have from the uh, event page, Sabrina. If, if you okay. have a moment, if if Chikar has time, um, briefly. Do you, um, do you have from, time? Do you have time, Chikar? I do have time. Okay. If you have okay. Time. <laughs> um, Lu, this is from Lewis Crowell. Uh, my daughter's dreamed of being shot in Dallas. When she woke, she had not seen the news until she woke up the next morning. She could not move her arm. She is spiritual and attracts spirits so much so she can't visit hospitals easily. After doing Reiki, her arm pain left and, and also she also saged her arm, um, smudged it with sage. She knew which officer she experienced after seeing the news. Do you think this is because of the fourth dimension influence? It is partially because she's very spiritual. She is actually incarnate of an angel from, the, from a, her last life. Angels are now incarnating and becoming part of the earth to help it with the ascension, holding energies and lights. She will be able to be very psychic in the sense that she is so empathic that it could be very harmful to her. So therefore, put some protection around her and put some light around her so that she is not so influenced by these things. Also, she will, since it was so apparent that she was uh, being affected by it, she did some very strong healing work in that scenario. She sent some very strong healing and that is why she could not move. The energy she sent was sent directly from her body. It paralyzed her. But she was so empathic and cared so much about the feelings of those that were involved. She sent out her energy in a very strong way to those that were there. 
Excellent. Thank you, Takur. That was um, beautiful. So that's good to know that there's more angelic energy among us as well. Um, I think it's many of us are, are feeling it. It's necessary to hold the, uh, the beginning of the ascension. It's like a thumbtack at the beginning here to hold it so that it does not pull out. And do you have any messages for all of us in general, or any of us, um, not, not, I mean, for our, our particular group as far as, you know, I know we're all following our joy and our, and our energy and kind of um, being guided where the healing is, is needed. Um, is there anything, I don't know, anything there, specific? There are or, so many ideas. There are so many ideas that Yukolo people have had. It is a very strong group of people. There are some people within this group that are, are being led to be leaders. As time will go on, you will see what I mean. But the, the ideas and the congregation and community that is here is unique to the world. And you will soon discover how unique. But that is all I can tell you right now. Thank you. That was actually a perfect and beautiful answer. Thank you so much for being here. My love to you, Takur. Um, we all love working with you. Um, thank you for what you're doing for us and with us. We really appreciate it. Okay, great. And, and I believe Sabrina has one as well. There is one more question here. I, I would like to... <clears throat> I would like if you could to address what happened in the uh, camera when I was in the store and maybe it's gonna maybe it could happen to other people as well when I was in the store and uh, I was looking at myself on the monitor and I noticed uh, whereas everyone around me looked very normal and I had some strange discoloration on my face if you could kind of explain and maybe that's happened to other people too and if they could look out for it I see yes it has other people it have has. explained that it was very, very noticeable. Well, let me explain the situation. I'm not sure that you know who David is, but David is not a human. David is from another planet. He is from Maya. He was the prince there, but he has discovered that he needs to be here for the ascension. Therefore, when he did look in the mirror at this point, it showed his Pleiadian image in the mirror. It, it was not a human image. If you would look at the photo, you would see that it is not retouched and it's not shadows or anything of that nature, but it is what he actually looks like on his planet to some extent. So therefore, it's proof that he is here. And those people that can see these things will know that they are also from other places and are here for a purpose of the ascension and for to help the rising of the planet. Do not be upset if you do witness this in yourself. You see, before he even witnessed it, he knew that he was from from the Pleiadian planet Maya. However, when he saw it, it was a confirmation. We have photographs of it. It is very interesting that the fourth dimensional energy was pulled down from the head into the feet and therefore exposing the actual look of the Pleiadian. To Kerr, regarding that, oh. it, it, I was just going to say, okay. regarding that, would was the image that we saw with Jim on the mountain in Arkansas, were we looking at the earth or were we looking at something else? You were looking at a replica of something else that was put there on the earth by the Atlanteans or the Lumerians. Okay. We're not sure which. Okay, we thought it was the Lemurians. Thank you. Uh, Jim and I both felt it immediately, and I, I was just now guided to ask that because, so given this, and that's outstanding information, given that then, what people are seeing in themselves as they're seeing themselves, their faces morph like in the mirror, is that what yes. they're seeing as well? Are they, okay. 
This is, it depends on the person. Some are here to be very helpful. Others are scrying and seeing themselves as other people. Do you understand that? It is a matter of knowing if that is who you are in the mirror or if you have scribed that image. Thank you for that amazing information. That's wonderful, David. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, Takura, I have a question from Paula. Um, and she wants to know, she says, is the idea of ascending into the dragon offered as a positive or negative? I do not know of this particular phrase, ascending into the dragon. Can you give me a little background? That, that's all she typed, so perhaps next time um, she can... I will she... look into that because I would not want to give any incorrect information. And I am not aware of that particular wording. Yeah, I had never heard of it either uh, before. So There are so uh, many different things on your planet that need to be looked into. Ancient thoughts and ancient rituals and ancient... Uh, thought processes that we are not aware of all of the things. We are trying to keep abreast of those things that are most potent and most realistic to this time and age. Yes. Um, to Kerr, I had I had had a uh, crystal skull uh, that kept calling me. Um... From what I sense, it seemed to be one of the original ones. I was wondering if, if you could tell me anything about that. Are you still in possession of this skull? No, I don't have it, but um, where is it? I kept seeing it. I kept seeing it with my third eye, and it kept calling to me. It's it's somebody else has it but it wants to be with me and this person I know he's holding it like storing it um, more like to admire it yes it's authentic I can see it through your third eye so um, I've been trying to locate it um, I just haven't been able to it is within a 300 mile a radius of you. Okay. Can we, can we locate so. it together with our minds? You could, probably could. I cannot, I am not permitted to guide you to it because that is one of the keys to the stargates that the earthlings must open themselves. Okay. So, so I will find it eventually? Is that what you're saying? I am hoping that you will. If okay. it is destined that you find it, you will. Yeah, because he, he kept, for for a while, he kept calling me and calling me and calling me. Yes, I cannot, I cannot give you any more information on that because you must find it yourself. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tucker. Um, there are other who want to come in. Is that is it time for them? Yes. So thank you for all the information that you gave us today and uh, for coming, for taking your time to be here, uh, for helping with the earth, for helping with the weather. Um, we didn't ask how that's going, but we'll we'll leave that for another time. Um, yeah. And uh, I do want to say uh, we appreciate all the work um, that is being that is being done. So, from all of us to you, thank you from our heart. Thank you, and I appreciate all your energies that are helping as well. Namaste. 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 Much love to you. Much love.
Ay. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, that's better. I am Nikolai. Hello. Welcome. The name Nikolai was given to me at early age. I prefer Nikolai. It's more masculine. However, from the, where I came from, Nikolai was appropriate. I've come because I've heard that others want to speak. There's much information that is coming through this world at this time. They are still using all the information that I have <clears throat> given to the world from the Akashic Records, even today. And they have not even completed all the projects that I started. Is there any questions? <clears throat> I believe someone in the room uh, with Jim was that they had a question. Is there someone here? Yes, it's me, David. Yes. Hi. Hi. I um I was wondering if we could get your opinion on uh, what's happening with the Man uh, Mandela effect, and uh, just if you're paying attention, because I know that it had a lot to do with the work that you did while you're here with the energies. Mandela effect. Is everyone aware of what that is? Yes. Pretty sure. The Mandela effect is come about because of the fourth dimensional energies pulling the timelines together or bringing them together as it moves forward. You see the time, the cloud is moving forward and as it does, they squeeze to come into the cloud. Mm -hmm. They come, that's the way it, it just happens. And if they don't make it into the cloud, they're, they, they line up along the edges as closely as possible. So therefore, it is an interesting effect that doesn't happen, but once every few million years. There are other clouds in the universes, but they rarely go through planetary systems. Is there something else that you would like to know about it? Do you have any, um, as far as I know, because it's getting closer and a lot of people are speculating and wondering exactly what's going to happen with it? Well, it is, we don't know exactly what all the effects of it will be because it's not happened to the human race ever before. Mm -hmm. It has happened to other species, very rare. It's in the Akashic Records that maybe three or four other species mm -hmm. in the whole universe that we know of here have, have been affected by it. And what they are experienced is going to be probably similar to what you experience. However, not all of them were humanoid and not all of them had a high fourth dimensional energy uh, in their brains. And so having the fourth dimensional energy in the abundance that you have it at this time will make it a very interesting experiment in many ways. Absolutely. And when things come, when this is, when this uh, cloud is finished going through, will things, do you have any idea if things will return to the way that they, they should? They should. Yeah. But things will Will be, there will be some things that will be permanently changed. Yeah. But many things will go back to the way they were if they were not permanently affected. <clears throat> now, there are some fourth dimensional things like writings and things that were inspired by the Akashic Records and things of that nature that might remain the same after it leaves. Right. And so then when when people with what I'm kind of wondering about, I think a lot of people that I've talked to online are wondering about if the people who's, for example, there's been somebody, Sally Fields, her name is now Sally Field, and I'm wondering if she recognizes it or if in her mind it's just always been Field. In her mind, it's always been Field because that is the way that the it works. Hmm. The Mandela effect will affect those just as if you called any of the owners of any of the the car manufacturers that right. have changed symbols or whatever, 
they will tell you that it's always been that way. Wow. Because they themselves are part of that fourth dimensional energy that is around that particular item. Mm. And so they cannot see it any differently than what it is right now because they are so connected to it. So if you would call any of the musicians that were involved in any of these songs that have been changed or lyrics or whatever, mm -hmm. they will tell you it's always been that way because that is how the Mandela effect will affect their actual fourth dimensional energy mm -hmm. because they created the song and so therefore that is how it is in their mind. When they listen to it, it will sound perfect. It will not be any different than what they ever remembered it. Oh, okay. The reason I was asking is because those one that's happening right now where it seems like the two timelines are bouncing off of each other, in one sense, when Kennedy was, uh, when President Kennedy was assassinated, you, there's a video out in one timeline. It actually looks like Jackie may have killed him and the car has six people in it where if you look in the museum right now, you only see a car that can fit four people. Yes. And that's what people are, and everybody's just kind of scratching their head, wondering. Well, you see, this was not a fourth dimensional experience. Mm -hmm. This was an experience of actual other dimensions right. that were, were interlaid into this experience. And so the, if it was fourth dimensional, the original film would also be changed. Right. But it is not. The, the original film is changed, but the artifacts that came from the film are not. So therefore, you will see that the original cars in the institution, where the film shows six people, the car shows four people, the, and different things of this nature. So we will, it was not a fourth dimensional uh, experience. So this means that the timelines actually crashed together at that point. Wow. And so that's the residue from it, I guess. Yes, it was a very s a sharp bounce. And it only took a second for that to happen. Huh. And this is not something that will ever be recognized by any of the doers then? No. Hmm. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for being my higher self. You're welcome. I have aspects of myself other places as well. But for now, is there other questions? Yeah, on the on the same subject. So, so yeah. if if the person, um, the people that have less, if you know to put it, less fourth dimensional energy, um, are they less likely to remember what it used to be called, or actually, what it was? No, actually, those with third dimensional energy will remember the originals, and they will not believe that the alteration is real. They'll think that it was manipulated by someone here on Earth or your planet. Mm -hmm. So they look at it and they say, yes, I remember it, this, this, but it, there's no way that it was changed other than people just changing it. Oh. Okay. And, and for then when they realize, after they go through the fourth dimensional energy cloud, there will be some things that they won't be able to deny after that point. Okay, and then when the events, w would you say that w when the events are not as significant, they're more, they're more likely um, to change back to what it used to be than, than yes. when they are significant? Very possibly. Okay. Very possibly. And for those who are interested in this, um, is there any way that people can do any kind of experiments to, to, to test um, this fourth dimensional energy? Well, I don't think so. Unless you have control of fourth dimensional energy, um, you wouldn't be able to test it. Um, you, have, you do have possession of it in your own brain. So test your thought processes of some of the things that haven't changed at this point. Go and check, say, the, how to spell the Beatles or how to do other things. Look at other things. How do you spell temptations? Uh, the different things that haven't changed yet so that you, when you know that they have changed, you are sure that you knew it beforehand. Right. 
That would be the only way that I would know. Look into things, pay attention, and then you will absolutely know when it changes. Because most of us, or most of you, when I was on the planet, I did not pay much attention to the things around me. I will be admitting that. I paid most attention to the things that I want to make, the inventions that I wanted to build, and the, the science, the information. If people were around me, I just I didn't even pay attention. But unless, unless I wanted to. But most of the time, I was preoccupied with my work. And many of you are the same way. You're preoccupied with the things of third dimension, but you're not paying attention to how it was in the past and what it's appearing like in the future. So if, if you would like to study that, look at many things from the past because the many things have changed and some of you people just don't remember mm -hmm. what it was. Yeah. I think there's another question in the room. Good morning. My name's Erica, and I'm here with my daughter, Lydia. And we're Good, just, morning. Good morning. We're wondering our connection to you, and also if there's anything that um, we're supposed to do to carry your work out. Um, ah, a wonderful question. Did you hear it? Not all Did you hear the question? Not the end. They wanted to know my connection with them, Lydia and Erica, and what they could do to carry out my work for me in the future. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, first of all, we do have connections. We do have connections, especially Lydia does. Um, she was my mother in a past life. She was my mother. Wow. And you were also um, very good friends in many other lives. You were a good friend, and you knew me. You were my mother when I was actually Nicola. Wow. Or Nicola. You're the <laughs> one that named me. Wow. So. <laughs> So therefore, Lydia was my mother. Very nice. I knew it when I came in, but I couldn't say anything unless she asked. But that is the truth. And you knew that, didn't you? She did know that, yes. And the, re and the thing that you can do to help me with that, you just be a positively, just help me move through this particular period of ascension because it's difficult for me. Let me tell you something, and you you already knew this about me in the in that lifetime, but I was actually very cold in many ways. I was not very human acting. I had my I had my intellectual business to take care of and I I was not really kind to a lot of people. But I I am different now. And it was one reason why I did not get much notice when I was here, is because I was not very kind it, it, to people, and I was, it wasn't your fault. <laughs> it was just that my, the Akashic Records had dumped so much information into me that I had to get that out. I had to get that out. And it, it was not that I was um, trying to be mean or inconsiderate. But I could not think of anything else but the mission at hand right. to get as much of this information developed as I could. Wow. So, and there was a lot of it. There was a lot of it. I have a question. Yes, someone said I have a question back there. Deja vu's and the Mandela effect. Do they do they work together? Do they not? Can you answer that? Yes. Um, when the timelines pull closer together, you do get the Mandela effect with your own self. When you're close enough, you can see your foot maybe moving ahead of your own foot, or you can see yourself in another dimension uh, looking at yourself just for a moment, and you think, oh, am I going crazy or what? <clears throat> no, not necessarily. When the timelines are pulled close together, you can see into them. So that will be happening a lot more in the future. So be aware of that. Gotcha. Thank Do you know when that's going to peak? Well, at this point, it's going to start in the beginning of September, around the 6th, 7th, 8th. They can't, they can't 
predict precisely because it speeds up and slows down a little bit. Sometimes it's 1,800 miles a day, sometimes it's 1,200, sometimes it's 1,500 miles a day, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a, a, a big deal, but it will pass through the, the solar system rather quickly, even though it's very large. Okay, thank you. Uh, Shir has a question. Hello, Nikolai. How are you? I am well. I'm better now than I was before. Ah. I see that uh, your mother, Linda, called you the child of light, if I'm not mistaken. That's how she named you when you were birthed in the storm. Yes. She did think of me that way, yes. <laughs> and when, when the Akashic Records uh, dumped information into me, uh, this was her, actually she knew ahead of time that this was going to happen actually. I believe that, because she was not surprised. She was not surprised that it happened. Uh, I have a question for you. There's a very famous quote of you saying that if you know the true meaning of 1, 3, and 9, you can um, get the keys to the universe or something of that nature. And I know about a couple of them uh, regarding the geometry and stuff like that, but can you maybe say a bit more about it? I know it's pretty long. There's an algorithm about 37,000 numbers long that will explain it. But uh, in a brief moment, I can explain that one is a beginning, three is uh, a perfect energy, and nine is the ending. And so if you would like to bring that all together, you will understand the universe. How's that? <laughs> Excellent. That's what I, I was... Um looking for. And David, you have a wonderful higher self. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I can tell you that 139 also <laughs> um, is an algorithm within itself and um, has its own meanings of, and if you put them together can make a, a, a symbol from several different species, which I didn't know of until I went to the Oversoul. 139 are specific numbers that are frequented by many species in, in many different ways. I see. And do we have any connection in any lifetime? You and I knew each other in lifetimes, but we didn't have any relative connections. We were friends. Ah, nice. Tony Lee is next. Yes. Hello, Nicola. Um, I I know that the purple plate energy can is effective with um, our refrigeration process and means at this point. And Raymond had indicated an answer to the question that I was asking about um, how can it be used to heal the physical body. Uh, I'm curious. Pardon? Oh, purple. Pardon me? The purple plate, energy of the purple plate. Yes. All um, right. And, and my question concerns, because the physical body is so massive, particularly for uh, an individual who may have extensive um, physical mobility issues, how, how would that purple plate energy be applied? All right. The energy of the purple plate is more vibrational than it is anything else. Colors have vibrations as well, but you have not discovered in what way how to measure them in the, an accurate way that can cause you to manipulate the vibration of a color. Do you understand that? Okay, yes. manipulation of color vibrations can be very healing. Let me explain in another way. You see, it's, it's so hard to bring it down because they are there's so so much math. Math is the thing that connects everything together with the universe. In fact, the whole universe is an equation. There is no doubt about it in my mind. If you put 
the universe on a piece of paper, it would have to be an equation. And therefore, this would also be the purple plate would be an equation as well. However, the way that this equation works when healing is that every part of the body has its own equation, its own vibration, its own way of working within the, the uh, realm that it is created within. So therefore, if you take the purple plate and put it into a for healing of a certain kind, then you would match the color and the vibration and then enhance it to include those uh, algorithms and numerical systems that are part of the body. Right. Now, the part of the body that is numerical in the sense that you can break it down into that and the vibration that is part of that would be agreeable with this because you have matched, you have given it something that it can match up to. Basically, what it does is take the pattern, or the blueprint, that's what they call it, the blueprint of the body and bring out the natural and original numerical sequence of how it, how it was in the beginning. And when you do that, it, it takes the numerical system, vibrates it, colors it, and matches it up. Does that make sense to you? Uh, it, theoretically it does. How to apply it, I don't know. Yes. The application of it is within the plate itself. So, but you have to know how to energize it, how to uh, work it. And that is something that I would have to come and connect up for you. But I can't do that, of course. But um, <laughs> it would have to have some power behind it that initiates uh, the movement, the vibration, and the connection. Do you understand okay. that? Would, yes. And would, now, this, would that be accessible, call, would that be accessible they call through meditation? It possibly could if your belief system were strong enough, yes. Also, the Tesla coil does the same thing. It, the Tesla coil is, the, is a, a great, it's a great omni inventor. It's the basis to many, many inventions. It has the intertwined uh, spirals within them. Right. The spirals are um, internally powerful. They, they have an energy of their own that is created like vortexes. They are actually create their own vortexes within vortexes. And so there, the Tesla coil can be the beginning of time travel, the beginning of movement in uh, uh, transporters, mm -hmm. can be the beginning of healing modalities where you take the vibration of one individual and remove the vibration of the illness within them and recreate them in another place. Mm -hmm. the, the Tesla coil has many, many, many uses. So... That is where, um, that is the beginning of many inventions that have not yet, well, they have, many of them are created already, but uh, you're governed that it is the beginnings of many different beautiful and wonderful and fascinating inventions. In fact, the Tesla coil put in certain um, uh, atmospheres of energy, Putting them in a sealed energy atmosphere with certain things can create energy that will be sustainable for long periods of time, and you could run your whole household for 100 years and not need to change anything, the light bulbs or anything. I mean, if they were created correctly, right. the energy would be consistent for at least 100 years. The black box, they call it. Do you remember that? Remember my black box? <laughs> but anyway... Um, Yes, it was, I, I recall. Um, so, are you suggesting that I, I look, in terms of uh, physical healing, that I look towards the energy of the coil rather than the plate? Yes, the coil is actually more powerful. The plate is useful, though. Don't don't, don't negate it because no, it does um, it does work. It does yeah. have a, a very very positive reaction. 
this, the coils are used for more things, though. Okay. Thank you. And also, I've, I've read, I, I wish that your ideas had been captured more so than Einstein, simply because I have recently read where our power grids could be more stable and more substantial and last longer, just as you have spoken, yes. um, if we had done that, gone that route. Actually, I, I don't know if I should say that, but it would probably change the world in a way that the monetary system would not be as so influential anymore. Mm. That would be awesome as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it was not meant to be for that time. Okay, and also just a comment, and perhaps the, um, I guess I'm curious to know if you can comment to my comment of the 139, my son's numbers, everything in his life includes those three numbers at some point uh, and in yes. some fashion. Is, yes. uh, do you know if that is significant to his purpose in being on Earth at this time? The number pi also includes those three numbers in a s certain specific way, in, oh, but in that order, actually. And that portion of pi relates to the universal agreement. And yes, oh. there is a reason why he remembers these numbers and has that particular sequence in mind. The, it is very powerful. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And Thank you for spending time with us today. I'll leave you now and turn it back to whoever I, I need to. <laughs> Brian? I have to tell you, I've had some lessons on how to be a little bit more pleasant. Yeah. Yes. I, I've had lessons. They said to me, oh, Nicola, you are just too staunch and too correct. So I, I learned what people are about and learned some very positive lessons about that. And, and so that is why I'm able to be here and speak to you in a, a, a more pleasant way. That's special for me. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for bringing that, that side of you. You're welcome. Thank you. There was someone that's face was there, but they're gone now. Brian. Yes, hello, Nikolai. How are you yes. doing? Yes, uh, also to expand on uh, Jonah Lee on her question. Also, uh, I, I do see those inventions, your technologies that you uh, developed a long ago, the theory, the, uh, your ideas, those are going to be manifested on the planet. I do see that in the next 20 to 30 years. And, you know, not really soon, but still a little far out. But they are going to be inventions of that were really work with the uh, integration of the human body, the human mind, on expansion of consciousness. So these are these devices; they are coming. Yes, they're already here, actually, but they don't know how to use them properly. Some of the some of the scientists do know how to use them and put them into a proper sequence and add to them so that they do the things that they. Um, they, are, they want them to do. But you understand that the coil itself is only the beginning. It's only the actual power source in some ways that, that, uh, that interwinding spirals in opposite directions create such a, a strong energy field. Now, Nikolai, the funny thing about that is it's just they're using also all these – the concepts are really based on nature. Yes. They're really oh, oh, based on nature. Just as I said, the universe, yes. is an, the universe is an equation, an algorithm, a whole bunch of numbers that come together in a way that is perfect. So, yes, this earth, everything can be broken into numbers. It sounds rather dull, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's actually very exciting because if you can manipulate the numbers, you can manipulate the earth. In its in its uh, patterns, you can manipulate anything on Earth if you understand its mathematical base and how to manipulate mathematics. Yes, yes. 
And the other question I had was the Stargate technologies um, with the time travel and other things. Um, even just starting out teleportation, um, how soon do you see where the average human being will be able to use just teleportation around the planet? Are we looking at 40, 50 years from now? It, it's, you already have it, but okay. it's not being shared with the people. The governments have it already. It's in the your secret space program. Mm -hmm. That teleportation is already in use. You've teleported people to Mars already, so um, it is in use already. Okay. Do you, do you see any projections or anything that will the average person will be able to use it, these? The thing is, it depends on how your future is goes. Okay. There's many different scenarios. You can go this way, you can go that way, you can make this decision, you can make that decision. It could be as soon as 10 years, it could be as many as 14. But 10 to 14 years, there people will know that it exists. Okay, okay. Well, that's all I have. Thank you much, love, my friend. You're welcome. Jay? Yeah, good. Yes? Hi. Hello, Hello. Nikolai. I would like Hi. to know if... No. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. I would like to know if any of my guides have a message for me in regards to the idea of feeling at a standstill. Yes, they do. Whenever you are at a standstill, that is a time to do an introspection. Always. Whenever you find that things have stopped and they are not moving forward, introspection is necessary. What is the reason for this stop? What is the reason why I'm not, I do not feel like I'm moving forward? And feel being the working word there because you are still moving forward unless you're moving backwards. You're not in stasis. You either move forward or backwards, you never stay the same. So therefore, you are still moving forward, but you feel like you have stopped. Do an introspective, also a meditation on how you can change this and how to get into connection with energies that are going to move you forward. You see, this is just a generic way to say that uh, it's time to stop and maybe do a little rest. Maybe not try so hard. Maybe let things happen a little bit more naturally. Make it, let yourself go a bit. Do you understand that? I do. And your higher self right now is saying, you're a great guy. Slow down. This is a time for you to just go take a deep breath and, and know that you are still going in a good direction and that tomorrow it might start, all over, uh, start a, whole new, uh, a whole new journey. Yes. Okay. Oh, I That's see that. Your, your journey is not over. Your higher self is telling me you have some th important things to do. So th thank you very much for that. <laughs> thank you. That was, um, that was interesting. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for that. I, I, I can actually use that one too. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Rhonda asked, uh, powerful technology is being used to severely target and phys uh, physically and psychologically injure some individuals. Um, there are it, some technology. Go ahead. She wants to know, is it an invisible, invisible crime? I think some of it may be coming from other timelines as well as this timeline. Can you give us any information? Point, at this point, there could be other technologies coming from other timelines, yes. Because they're bleeding into one another. The timelines are bleeding into one another, and they're coming together in some ways. I, Rhonda, ah, yes. She is a, aware of other timelines and timeline travel. So therefore, she is aware that some technologies can come from other timelines. However, right now, the technology that bothers her the most comes from this timeline, and it's microwave uh, energies. But she's very sensitive to it, and it's because there probably is something implanted in her 
that uh, actually draws that to her. That needs to be removed. Oh, okay. Um, and on that same outline, there are many people who have become um, allergic and are reacting to um, uh, apparatuses around them and those kinds of things, and they find themselves being able to eat less and less things and be around less and less things. So is there anything you can recommend for that? Yes. Um, they must accept everything that is around them. What is happening is this. They are, they are trying to they are trying to change their personal surroundings. But the only way that they can do this successfully is to accept their personal surroundings and not to be afraid of it and not to think that it, they're allergic to it, not to um, stop using it, but it is part of their belief system that uh, it, it, it things are against them. But I have to say that they need to include more things in their belief system. Now, I'm, I know that doesn't make sense to you at the moment, but inclusion of all things will bring things back into a balance with them. Does that make sense to you? And I, there's other ways, there's ways that you have to do it, but I can't go into that right now. It's a too, it's, uh, it's very involved because each individual is different. And I would have to know what individual and what things that they are talking about that they are not actually uh, being able to handle anymore. Yeah. Because it's different for each person. Yes, and um, particularly food. Many children have become allergic to many, many foods. Um, yes, they... I understand that. Some children are, are being born with higher IQs and are actually hybrid children, and so they will adapt. As they become teenagers and adults, some of these things will be less effective on them. They will adapt to this atmosphere, this uh, world, and all of the materials that are here. Okay, I have one last question for you. Um, Marco asked, um, what is your opinion on Elon Musk from Tesla Motors? Is he an ET? One moment, please. Eamos is a hybrid human. That's all I will say. Okay. Thank you, Tesla. Um, I, w I want to I thank you. For now. Yes. They are telling me my time is done. Yes. So, thank you. Thank you for answering all our questions. And I hope and I was able coming. to shed some light on some things for you. Yes, and maybe next time you come, you can speak about what you were just saying more in depth. Because I think it's important uh, for many people who, who have, you know, um, who have those, those things to deal with, um, to learn more about it, to see how they can work around it. Very well. But I, like I said, it's different for each person. Some people can eat peanuts, some people can't. Some people can are allergic to uh, dust, and some people aren't. And some people can be in neon light, and some people can't. It would be an individual thing that they had to actually uh, deal with. Okay. All right. On that note, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Namaste. 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 Thank you for coming. Hello. Hey. Hi, Jim. Hi, how are you? Look who's here. 
Oh, there he is. <laughs> I said, oh, Jim needs some water. Hi, Max. Oh, Max yeah. Max is here. Yeah, and there. Hi, Max. Yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was a nice to be a in presence of Tesla, I just recently finished his autobiography, so I had tons of questions. But you know, next time it would be nice. Yes. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, I just popped in to check if you, it's convenient for you to do uh, instead of noon tomorrow in, to start at eleven tomorrow. Is it good for you? That's fabulous. That's so for much. For Reiki, yes. for Reiki one. Yeah. So yep. tomorrow we start Reiki one A four hour segment at uh, 11 a.m. EST and my time it would be minus three hours whatever uh, 8 a.m. Uh, PST yeah thank you much 10, just 10 because we like about 10, 10 a.m. Central I'll be there uh-huh yes. oh you will be there yes right yes. so we have about um, nine online students and three local students do you have anything anybody local on your side um, no, not at this point. All right. Thank but you. I, That's all I wanted. David will be here tomorrow, so I'm going to use him as my guinea pig. No. Oh, wow, nice. <laughs> and hi, everybody on the, on the other side. Yeah, nice to see everybody. Oh, and I wanted to ask you, how was your ignition the other day? I, I wanted to get back to you, but I never did. So. Ah, ignition. Remember? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm. Uh, uh, you're talking to a new person now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, really? it's it was it was a big thing. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Well, I wanted to get back to you, but I never did, so I thought I'd just ask now. So. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Have a have a good day. You bye bye. Too. Nice meeting you. So anyway, all right, here we are. I I wanted to talk to you about that. We'll talk about that later sometime. Okay, so just to confirm, the Reiki class for tomorrow is at what time? Eleven EST. Okay, eleven EST Reiki class tomorrow, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Max, they already know where to go to connect with you and to find the link and all of that? Right. Uh, if somebody wants to, yeah, the ones who signed up, of course, knows, no, okay. and the new ones, either email at reiki at humancolony.com or, 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 or just go to Human Colony and there is classes there, big menu classes, and it's there. Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Um, now I would like to ask who wants to do a blessing. I will start. Okay. Uh, any, uh, do you want to line up, or you know who, who goes next? I usually like first line up everybody. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. And it you know, you well. guys know what to do. Yeah. All right. I hello on. Wow. Do you know that was a prayer of the Native American Indians to call the planets and the earth into alignment and balance. And that was very appropriate because that is something that's it's very necessary for us to do to bring in everything into the into balance right now. So thank you very much. I could there are so many words happening so fast I couldn't get it all. So, but I know what it was. It's very good. Who's next? Brian.
All right. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Dia le ya kateya, na se ya kotoa, i le ana ni ra, ko solo i ni ya kateki shelia, nu kotoa, i le ya kateya, shala ni ya kateya rala, i ana se kotoa, i ya so kotoni shaketiya, olo i ya kadaniya, u so kotoa, i ya se kadiyala. Niki Atoko, Oso Oshiata, Ua Leono, Ukotoa, Hihia, Kua. Keep your eyes firmly on all the things that are yours right now. Do not worry about space or time or energy, but be within yourself and ignite with your family together and grow together as one at this time. Your fourth dimensional energy is about to expand. So make sure that the ones that you love are close by and that you are connected with them securely so that you may grow together in a way that will help you expand in so many ways you will not even be able to imagine. Ha. Ah. Kio kontu no suku a katu, ta yi kio kua ta hatu a ta, toshku a ta ni kiyuku ta ka, tonu kua ka ta, ha shuntu o tu shi kio kua tu, te kantu no shaki o kua ta, sheni o lua na yi kio kutushu, tu tani ka sheni o lua. Lolu na ku tia ka, shenu o ku tantu ala na ku su kuntu. Sheri o ku ala tia koskutu, ne kali ki ana, ta lali o ko, shenu ala ka. Te ri o kolo no skuru kotu, ten tonos ka te esku o tu, na i ki ala naski, ten tonu no shaki o totu. Nā tua tasku tua, tenua, shanu kotu o tosku o tu, ne yu o londu o kati, te skaru on tua naska tua ta. Ta shanu o kuara, te noru ku oru nā katu o su o ka. We see your eyes are open and that you are awake. There is great solemnity and great joy at once when you realize who you are and where you are going. The responsibility is great and so there may be some fear but let it go because there is no fear in the outcome of all these things. But there is great joy and great uplifting, great enlightenment and the thoughts that things can move into a new time and a new age with a greater sense of balance and equality. Be of good cheer at this time, for you know that you are part of something wonderful, beautiful, and yes, even eternal, and therefore you will not be forgotten. Your names will all be remembered, but there will be a time when you will not think that all these things will come to pass, but in the long run, you are the beginning of something great. Wendy? Mianua Satiana Kala Soha Mayomaya Lahianaki. Mamorelia Satyana i Walaki Mayua Kakaiba Yanshani Alaha Ma si Tariki la Yandara Kapa Yasanakoka Yashanoko Palandara Sima Sikiya i Paikosotolo Lama Liana Kawa Shashyama Mitila i Kia Darak Liandara Kopala Nima Wala Soku Mamala i turukuleambayaya noko palianta si tarakila hayawashu. Makura hi valentia waka saya katu hapakista kiana kawa oshowa 
na polandia kayawasia na kalahiso kulkia mi tada sana adua koha mia atu kokoyashana malua mahala namaste your hearts will be celebrated by every generation that follows this one your light will be seen and your light will be continued do not fear your generations to come will be enlightened by this time be of good cheer be of good happiness and know that this is a time when you cannot do anything but move forward and bring fire and light to the future the path is bright you are being led follow on follow on fear not fear not and there there will be a great reward. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone, for your blessings and for your giving and for, you know, in every question, someone learns something that they can use. So I want to thank everyone for coming, for being here, for being with Jim, for supporting Jim, for supporting Hupolo for supporting each other and and for moving forward um, though it's been challenging for many I want to say yeah. that that many have moved forward so kudos to you it is. also I have one announcement and not to toot my own horn but I have been selected for the channel panel this year so I am really very good Jim uh, I'm very, very excited about that, and it will be in October, and it will, will be an online event, so I'm very excited to be a part of that. So I don't have all the details yet, but I have been notified, so thank you very much, and uh, it's su support it if you can. I, I'm really excited about it. Very good. Um, I would also... Um when, whenever you get the information, if you pass it on to me, I can spread the word. Yes, I don't think that it's all shored up yet, who's going to be there and everything, but okay. I know that uh, it's at least going to be six or eight channelers, I'm not sure. So, it'll be cool. Very good, Jim. Very good. Very good. We, we knew it would eventually happen. Come on. <laughs> I, I was yeah I was a little surprised but I, I, I'm uh, very thankful that's I am uh, very very excited very I feel good. very glad remember what I told you Jim what <laughs> it's your mind <laughs> never mind I think yeah. you remember <laughs> I don't Thank know you. my mind is blank right now Thank so you, my everyone. mind is sort of I will tell you on Wednesday. <laughs> Thank you, okay, Sabrina. Then. Thank you, everyone. Jim, David, everyone. Thank you so much for being Thank you, here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.